you are set for a powerful encounter that will change your life forever, as you are about to listen to this powerful sermon by Apostle Joshua Selman. A shift is about to take place in your life that will lead to a supernatural transformation. And within the next two to five minutes, as instructed by the Spirit of God, I want to impart this grace. I told you that is a gift that God wants to give someone. To make all men see. To make all men see their future. To make all men see what God is saying. To make all men see his program. To make all men see where their wealth is. Just because everybody is running there, you may run there and your wealth is not there. To make all men see what business to do. To make all men see what dimension of ministry you have been called into. To make all men see where your helpers are. Esther, to make all men see where Ahasuerus is. Naomi, to make all men see where Boaz is. To see where your victory is. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart. I'm not wasting your time. Your life will change remarkably, believe me. Remarkably. Can I tell you? The gift of sight will also let you see where the problem is. It can show you where the problem is. This backwardness in this family, where is it? What is the root of this tragedy that has tied down men, tied down women, tied down great people? It is not only to see the future, you can see the origin of tragedies and to correct them. Who seen that this man was born blind? Himself or his father? And Jesus said, neither. and those who are following online you are about to receive something miraculous and marvelous miraculous and marvelous the gift of sight the seeing eyes he said blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear In the name of Jesus. 
a heavy grace from heaven. Let it rest upon you now. Take that grace now. Anyone here under the sound of my voice called to operate in the prophetic office, I activate that grace to see now. declare the grace that brings life to your dreams and your visions from this night may that grace rest upon you now restoration of dreams restoration of prophetic dreams restoration of visions in the name of Jesus Christ Number two, I want to pray for you. Your imagination, your creativity, after the order of Bezalel, after the order of Uzziah, in the name of Jesus, extraordinary ideas, extraordinary concepts, begin to see them now. Begin to see them now. The ideas connected to your wealth, Begin to see them now. What's that song? Another measure. Sing it for me. Shalega paradadata. Another measure. Upon your life, upon your ministry, receive it in the name of Jesus. I impart that grace upon you in the name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus what you have never seen in scripture I open your eyes to begin to see it I open the eyes of your understanding unusual insights into scripture receive it in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Now hear me. There are many of you at this point in your Christian experience. You are in desperate need of the revelatory gifts of the spirit to be activated. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, I decree and declare. Anyone here who is desperate for these gifts of the spirit and it has not rested upon you or it has rested upon you at a level that can no longer host the burden and the responsibilities upon you, I stretch my hands, receive a fresh impartation now. A fresh impartation now. A fresh impartation now. (laughs) 
Adonai 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 trouble you have entered because of spiritual blindness every mistake you have made some of you are in financial troubles now because of the bankruptcy of sight some of you may be in marital crisis right now some of you may be in ministerial troubles right now in the name of Jesus I invoke the mercy of God Come out of that situation now. Come out of that situation now. A miracle service is next week. But please allow me to speak over your finances. There is something your eyes need to see. I want to pray for you. Can I tell you this? Listen. Your wealth is not everywhere. Don't make a mistake of just copying and joining the bandwagon. You will get into trouble until you deplete yourself. Just because he's working for others does not mean it will work for you. You have to see what the Lord is saying concerning you. I'm about to pray for you. Some of you will see it in dreams. Some of you will see it in visions. Some of you will have prophetic confirmations. But I stand by prophecy, wherever your financial resources will come from, I gravitate you towards that area. I gravitate you towards that area. I gravitate you towards that area. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody here who is a leader, or you are in ministry, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you the eyes to see beyond just a 2020 vision let it be imparted upon you I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart may nothing take you unawares again I say it again may nothing take you unawares that before it happens by the power of sight may you see it so that if you have to stop it you stop it from happening and if you have to allow it then you allow it happen hear me by the gift of sight you will never enter any vehicle that will kill you let me repeat it again you will never enter any vehicle that will kill you Let me give you a disclaimer. Many of you will go to sleep and you will wake up from this encounter with many visions. Listen, never execute anything you see until you verify it with the word. I need to give you this disclaimer. No matter how accurate what you have seen is, when you get up, do not execute until you can support that vision with scripture and where possible seek godly counsel i'm saying this to you because there are many people an impartation like this is very risky because when your eyes are open you will see all kinds of things and satan can appear as an angel of light are we together yeah the devil can appear as an angel of light and want to manipulate the sincerity of your passion to see and you may see things or God can give you correct visions and here comes Satan with wrong interpretations of it and you will carry a wrong interpretation and connect it to a correct vision and it will end up misleading you and misleading others no matter what I see I have to confirm it with scripture and where it is beyond my spiritual level to interpret 
I will consult with those who have gone ahead of me and open up my heart and say, I've seen something like this. Sir, what do you see? What can you say about it? And sometimes they will say, don't worry. Give me a few days. Let me pray about it. Ah, this is what you saw. This is what you saw. Never be too big to be guided. No matter how accurate you are, we see in part. I forgot to tell you that. That even after you have received the grace to see, you will see in part. That means the word of God that is wholesome and complete and entire must vet your visions, must vet your dreams, must vet your creativity, must vet your prophetic experiences. That way, go and listen to my message, the value of encounters. There is the prophetic dimension of the word that immunes you and stops you from getting into error. Many people prayed their way to visions, but because they did not honor scripture, they started seeing things that misled them. Some of you have seen people like that. They start acting as if they are having a mental condition. It was prayer that took them there and they did not have respect for scripture. They now start, you see them misbehaving. They start talking to themselves. They will not take their bath for days. They will start looking as if they are mad people. Eventually, they will get them on admission in the hospital. I have to tell you as a responsible man of God that when you are open to the vistas of the spirit, it is a very vast realm. What gives you stability is your respect for scripture. Otherwise, your eyes will see a lot of things. The devil will manipulate you to sleep and see someone carrying the form of your mother, lifting a knife, and you will get up and say, Ah! So my mother is the person behind this. And Satan has succeeded in cheating you. He took advantage of the opening of your eyes. As an, an, an innocent woman who loved you and nurtured you, you will begin to hate her. This is the number one problem with the prophetic ministry. Their inability to sieve their experiences and vet it from the lens of scripture. There are many people today who are called witches and wizards. There are many sincere family members that have come at loggerheads because some apostle or some prophet said, this one is this. I believe that there is witchcraft. But there are many people, an innocent husband and a wife, and suddenly they make the wife hate her husband. I see that this guy wants to destroy you. Interpreting visions has a protocol. There's no time for that now. But you need to learn to see your visions. There are many things you will see that are not necessary. You dump them and focus on that which is consistent. Everything you see does not have to be interpreted. When you are mining gold, you will fetch sand. A lot of other things will come. Push them away. You are looking for gold. Hallelujah. I'm saying this so that you don't create another kind of error. And for someone who is watching, I have to bring this balance as we wrap up. Everything you see, no matter how sure you think you see or saw, make sure that you open up in scripture. And if it is a revelation that would demand you taking destiny steps, seek godly counsel. By the privilege of God's grace, we are here to help. Don't stand up and suddenly say, you know what? I had a vision and in that vision, the Lord said I should leave my job as a breadwinner of 10, the one who takes care of 10 people. Before you take that step, seek godly counsel. There are people that God has washed their eyes with eyes self. They can see and say, this is not what it means. Be careful. Do not take a wrong step and destroy your spouse and destroy your husband and destroy your children and destroy your parents. I'm saying this as we close because there have been people, I can tell you through the years, I've been involved with people who because of the, the depth of their prayer life, meditation, word study, their eyes became open. Some of those people will get up in the night and start trekking no shoes to the river and tell them a spirit, someone appeared. I know one gentleman, he's now late, long dead. The guy used to go through story by 4, 8, 4 p.m. He would enter one building they used to use as an auditorium. He would sit down there because he said there was an angel, some feminine angel that used to come to him. 
that they will sing together she takes him out in the spirit and takes him to various places around nigeria this guy started isolating himself from people he started behaving like somebody who was having a medical condition i mean what i'm saying he got into depression because he was like nobody else was his friend he claimed they used to sing together with that bean i remember interviewing the guy and i said describe for me the bean once he started doing i said you are you are meeting with a familiar spirit oh but she tells me good things behave yourself respect parents i said you don't know satan that gentleman today has passed on to glory years ago it is true so i'm saying this so that believers don't blindly go and start writing everything and executing them verbatim what was written was written so that it will not be changed your visions can be altered i taught you here that it is written is greater than i saw it is written is greater than i heard if you can respect the word of god then your seeing becomes profitable it is not everything i've seen that is from god it is not everything i've seen as a man of god that is worth executing when i pass them through the lens of god's word i find some of them wanting and i just hang them there until i grow higher to vet them again or until i dump them because i do not believe in them you must have the maturity to respect the word of god and no matter how accurate your insights are let them pass through the sieve of the word and then you have created a safety net for your excelling wisdom in stature and he saw the importance of favor he had to increase in favor with god you can have favor with god and not have favor with men if you have favor with god you will have encounters you will see angels mary was highly favored and she saw angels she had all kinds of things but you will be broke you will suffer the doors will remain closed the doors are not closed in heaven they are closed on earth so you need favor with both god and man go and lose the cold and bring him and when the owner asks for it tell him the master had need if favor was not on jesus you will be surprised what that man would have done to jesus Nobody works hard and ties his coats, you come and lose it because you have a crusade. Who do you think you are? It is favor that is on you that will make someone stand up and say, Please, what can I do to increase you? He said, God is, he said, No, 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 I, I, I owe you. Please believe what I am telling you. No strings attached. I'm interested in your ministry. I'm interested in your project. How can I help? Please, can I pay the school fees of your children till university? Give me that honor. And you are there wondering and saying, Are you sure that there is not? He said, No. No. I will give these people favor in the sight. In the sight. Listen. Pastor sir, I prayed for one month for the grace for favor to come upon my life because I studied ministry and I studied living and I found out if I don't have favor, things will be very bad and I did not want to compromise to get to a point where because of pressure, you will dabble into things that are ungodly because you are trying to feed your belly. I cried to the God of heaven the day it came, I said this is it. I found it. I found it. Favor. Like a magnet, everybody looks at you and you become their delight. They look for ways to see that ministry is easy. They look for ways to see that you are lifted. Hallelujah. You need favor to achieve your goals. Let me show you quickly how to activate favor. But are you getting blessed? Favor. The first key to activate favor is honor. Please write it down. Honor. The first key that activates favor is honor. The discerning, the celebrating, and the rewarding of men for their uniqueness 
you are far from favor when you dishonor men you are far from favor when you dishonor God you are far from favor when you dishonor principles honor when a door that was open today closes tomorrow dishonor closed it dishonor is the trivializing the downplaying of the sacrifices listen carefully of the spiritual investment of man when you when the devil wants to shut the door of favor he will give you an attitude of sarcasm an attitude that downplays the sacrifice and the 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 uniqueness of man oh pastor amos he's a great man what is there is he the only man of god you see that attitude no matter how you pray that attitude of dishonor has already closed the door you will weary yourself in front of that door i have watched with wonder and shock across the body of christ i've seen pastors apostles prophets great people anointed but you can trace the doors that are closed towards them there are this is why our generation of young people don't move forward our extent of dishonor to parents dishonor to people every young man who just carries anointing is lousy is sarcastic sees an old woman and an old man and treats them like children and we continue to break spiritual laws and spend our lifetime paying for it this honor is terrible is worse than a bomb blast are we together he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward honor honor is powerful some of you have parents that the grace upon their life is that nothing finishes they may not be millionaires but you've seen that grace you will never ask mama for anything and she'll say i don't have in spite of the fact that she's not educated there is always a grace you are working with an oil company but you still say mama can you help me with hundred thousand and she will open one basket and bring it out it's a grace it's not just savings you have not honored that grace that's why it did not come upon you and in spite of the fact that you are doing a white collar job blue collar job whatever kind of color you find out that you are not making progress the anointing of god is hidden in man but it takes honor to allow it flow towards you you see every rich man and you just said look at the thieves this is our share of uh, national cake no I, you don't know the story of that person that person came to lagos slept under a bridge continue to walk the principles of the kingdom listen the palace has a way of eroding scars but make no mistakes they are there every great man has scars and if they are honest enough they will not only to tell you stories they will show you the scars let no man trouble me he says for i bear my body the mark i didn't jump the school of the spirit i went through it oh why is this businessman thriving like this maybe he was just lucky why is this man of god i'm sure they are just lucky and you shut the door favor is controlled by honor you will never hear me dishonor any man of god in the body of christ you will never hear me stand on anybody's pulpit and tear down the relevance of that church i will never not this church not any church no i will teach truths i will within the limitation of the apostolic office i will see that the body of christ comes to the coordinate of truth but i will administer it in love as i'm teaching you now I teach with a deep sense of reverence and honor to you because I do not know what grace you are carrying as you are seated there you may not even be aware but the grace is still there I can honor my way to receiving that grace while I am teaching show me a man that understands honor and I show you a man who does never shut for. No. 
There is a grace that comes with honor. It makes you likable. Beulah, Hepsiba. People look at you and want to be around you. They will run around themselves to see that they connect to yourself. Listen, if you are alone and you are struggling, it's proof that dishonor continues to close open doors in your life. When I found that law, I said, this is it. I don't dishonor men. I truly do not. You wanted to marry the lady. But the day you went to see her parents, you were acting as if they are stupid people. And the father was just watching you. Dressed like an armed robber. Looked like, looked like, looked like an irresponsible boy. They didn't say you should sit down. You sat down. You didn't even carry anything. You carried a bottle of wine holding it in your hand as if you are selling it. And, you, and the parents watch you. I'm showing you what dishonor does to our generation. They, they won't say you are stupid. They will respect you. When you are done, they say, it's alright, um, we have seen you. You will hear from us. Next thing you see an invitation card of their daughter to a proper, honorable, responsible young man. Same thing with preachers. God grants you an opportunity to platforms that you know that you should not even be there. And you run down everybody and make it look as though it were your power. You run down every man of God. There is no discernment of cadres. And that door exits you never to open for you again. When a door opened yesterday and does not open tomorrow, there is an explanation. This honor closed it. There are people who are invited to many churches and ministries only once and they never invite them again. The message was powerful, but the persona did not carry honor. Are we together? Number two. The second key that activates honor is called value. Value. I mean that activates favor value what is value a measure of your contribution a measure of your usefulness your skill a measure of your productivity life was designed to work based on a reward system if you are valuable I've always said it that most people say preachers are blessed for doing nothing and I say no 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 we are not blessed for doing nothing. There is an explanation as to the blessings of God. It's just the nature of how our value is dispensed that makes it look like it's nothing. Are we together now? Every man of God is blessed because he's a supplier of value. Just because the value is spiritual in context does not mean it is not. It's real value. You are shaping the understanding of people. You are connecting them to faith. You are opening their eyes to see. You are constructing a destiny for them based on an information that is referenced on the word of God. That is value. Are we blessed? Listen to me. The Bible says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business he leaves you with an assurance that he will stand before kings he will not stand before mean men you must make up your mind that to attract favor you are going to be exceptionally valuable and value is twofold first your virtue or character then second your transactable skill don't limit value to just skill there are many people who are not well behaved but are skillful. Ask any wealthy man here. Ask anybody who is a leader, a company holder, a man of God here. Nobody wants a gifted rebel. A gifted rebel is not an asset. Are we together now? Your virtue is a measure of your closeness to the character of Christ. Virtue is value. Virtue is not just something for women. You know, when they say a virtuous person, you just imagine a woman who wants to marry. No, 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 no. Virtue has nothing to do with women and marriage. It is the closeness. Virtues of respect. Virtues of discipline. Virtues of diligence. There are many, many indisciplined people who want to be successful. The discipline to be consistent in prayer. The discipline to study. Are we together now? The discipline to tell yourself, if I need to fast, I fast. Favor, that's why, that's why when people say favor is unmerited, those who have it just nod their head and say, no, you got it wrong. Virtue. 
that you can greet people do you know you can get a job just for being respectful good morning sir say, who are you this young man well sir i'm i'm trusting god for a job really no you're a young man come and that's it somebody's prayer point of two weeks was answered through the communication of virtue praise the name of the lord and then finally we have to pray we'll deal with that in the night but there is a grace called the esther anointing huh. the esther anointing is a grace esther chapter 2 from verse 14 and 15 Alagbara, you, you are the mighty God. God. Yeah, yeah, life is about to change please don't miss the vigil Esther chapter 2 the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to the fact that people don't just rise from Shushan to the throne there is an anointing the Bible says when Vashti was banished are we Bible students there was a vacancy listen ladies listen everybody I show you the key that takes people from Shushan to the palace there is an anointing I call it the Esther anointing they gathered young virgins from everywhere and Mordecai decided to give his little girl a try Esther is together with other happening city ladies and Hagar tells her let me share with you a secret I know the king I've worked with the king for many years I know the kind of woman that the king wants don't mind all these things you see other women doing i will give you an ointment rub it on your body for one year keep rubbing that ointment every day i give you one with aloes for six months i give you another one after one year go before the king you will be his queen and then the bible says in the evening she went and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women to the custody of that name and the king's chamberlain which kept the concubines she came in unto the king no more except the king delighted in her and that she were called by name you know he was explaining what would happen 15 and now when the turn when it was the turn of esther the daughter of abihel the uncle of mordecai who had taken her for his daughter was come to go in unto the king she required nothing but what he guy the king's chamberlain the keeper of the women appointed he had shown her a formula when you read and just that oil was what she kept rubbing and then read the b part if you're a christian one to read and esther obtained favor here it is again in the sight of all men that looked upon her hold on do you know how many people look at you in a day if all of them favor you you will not ask for money again in your life what kind of grace is it that comes upon a man that the moment you look at them you are compelled to be interested in their lives it's like a spell this charm like approach verse 17 not even the king could resist this grace and the king loved esther above all the women before esther came there were others he was looking at but not when esther comes he already said okay note this note this this one looks close but here comes a young hebrew girl a village girl with nothing but an anointing 
she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than more than more than so it's true that before you came five people were already being considered for the job already their names were down but not when you show place favor on your certificate and present it if all you present is a piece of paper you will not get anything add to your piece of paper favor add to your contract proposal favor if all you have is just design and quotations you will not get anything not in this wicked world than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Favor is a law that opens doors, opens gates, opens cities. Apostle is because I've never had the opportunity to be in the government house. I'm so skilled. Unfortunately, there are times that you can interpret dreams, but you will need somebody who is already in the palace to send you an invitation. It is favor that connects you. When I found this key, Pastor, I cried for one whole month praying, Lord. The kind of grace you have put upon my life, if I do not have the help and the favor of men, I may not go far. And so I ask you, favor, I prayed this when it came. I said, thank you, Jesus. There is no territory that closes against me. It is true. There is a grace. Who is interested in you? Who is interested in what you carry? There are people who will look at you and say, Sir, what do you do? You say, I'm a businessman. What do you supply? You say, I, for some, I, I want to introduce you to somebody. We have been looking for someone like you. Whereas that person's cousin still does the same business. And he will not introduce that person. Favor is powerful. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Call Ziba for me. And the Bible says they brought Ziba. And he said, Is there anyone left? And Ziba said, In Lodeba, there is one crippled man called Mephibosheth, but he will not do you any good. He's a crippled man. It was not his fault. A midwife malhandled him and he became crippled. He sent for, I think that should be First Samuel, Second Samuel 9 or something like that. Yes. When you read everything, he now sent for Mephibosheth. When Mephibosheth came, he said, I am a dog. What will I do in your presence? And he said, Ziba, you are your sons. Your assignment is to farm. Farm, bring food for this man. But as for you, you will eat with me here. Go to verse 10 and see a very fearful statement in verse 10. He said, Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servant shall till the land for him. And thou shalt bring in the first fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy son, shall eat bread all the way at my table. Read the last sentence. Dangerous statement. Now, Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. And yet they didn't choose one of them. 15 sons, 20 servants, and the king did not them said go and get me one crippled person a man has 15 sons 20 servants you left all my sons and you sent me to Lodeba to bring a crippled man please rise up on your feet I'd like you to find a prayer partner for these two minutes if the person is not praying leave him Find a serious partner that means business with destiny. In one minute, I'd like you to open your mouth and pray. My doors must open. And I 
will give you the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. Shalat kabarata katojiata. Embrake te kabarata katojiata. Embrake te kabarata Holy Ghost presents a The keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare that the spirit of faith. That the spirit of faith comes upon me in this season. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit of faith. That overcomes. To open every door. You are going to pray. I, I, I didn't have the time to teach you in details. That one of the ways you can receive favor is by praying favor provoking prayers. You can pray your way into a realm of favor. And I want you to pray. Lord, I'm tired of this level. There has to be someone in Lagos on earth who can look upon me with favor. And I'm praying, may that grace come upon me. Lift your voice and pray. 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 Thank you for watching, like our videos, share and subscribe. Thank you.